So we have understood what machine learning and artificial intelligence are. What are the potential of the AI? Why we are talking about it right now? Let's see now how we can implement it. For example, being, building a company around those AI paradigms. Let's distinguish an AI company and a company that uses AI. Let's start from the latter. A company that uses AI is mere using some machine learning models trained on the companies of available data. That's it. It's a company that uses machine learning models. Nothing more, nothing special. But uh, what a really AI company is, it means that the, uh, the company is structured around AI and its paradigms and uh, the three key elements of a machine learning model, which is data learning and uh, the task definition. So, for example, an AI company has uh, some form of strategic data acquisition and storage as a pervasive automation, a scrupulous quantification of every part of the business. That's what a really AI company is. And the goals of the AI used in a, in a inside a company could be, for example, efficiency and automation. What we've seen here uh, before, uh, as Industry 4.0. We can support specialized personnel. Uh, we can develop new processes or services that uh, or products that previously were in economically and or technology technologically unsustainable. Or, for example, we could increase in personalization the, the customization of products and services. Thanks, all of, of these 4.4 uh, ballots could be done thanks to the machine learning implemented in the company. So, with machine learning came also a new development life cycle. And it is an, an extension and an evolution of a common software development cycle. In particular, we have to start by defining the task, as we've seen in the first section. Then we start to collect in data or use what is already available in the company. We do model exploration, model refinement, then we test and evaluate the model. We deploy the, this model and we integrate the other the uh, company's ecosystem. Then we monitor and maintain the machine learning model using also the new data that is collected. While, for example, the model is already developed and uh, is uh, on the its development uh, deployment phase. For example, so um, since uh, the machine learning development cycle is an extension of what is already done today with the softwares, here we can see how the system testing and monitoring is evolved. Uh, for example, uh, in the testing and monitoring, we have unit tests integration tests and system monitoring. These uh, three main elements remain on the right side, uh, talking about machine learning. But other tests need to be developed. For example, the data tests, which, in which we test the data that is used by ingested by the model. We test the models we test the infrastructure, we monitor the data, we monitor the predictions. So, a lot of other types of testing and monitoring. 
since the components of the a machine learning model are quite uh, m more in number or of a generic software. Let's see now at the, the Maslow hierarchy of needs and for AI companies. So at the bottom we have the login, the sensor, the external data, this user generated content, which is the collection of data. We need the data to develop, uh, in, uh, to gain insights from the business and develop machine learnings and models. And then we have to move to store the, this data with in some sort of infrastructure, pipelines, ATL, data storage, and so on. With this data, we have to explore, transform it. We have to aggregate, to label, to get some insights using analytics, metrics. Then we have to learn to uh, and optimize the data collection, but also uh, the infrastructure. For example, we do A-B testing, A-B testing, experimentation. And on the top, we can develop deep learning and machine, complex machine learning models. But who is involved in this pyramid? Well, in a small company or in a startup, all of these phases uh, are done by a data scientist. Generally speaking, a small company uh, needs to start uh, small. So if the company is not oriented at first for the development of deep learning, then the, in the company that, knows, that uh, does not allocate those resources on uh, complex ma machine learning algorithms. So the data scientist is the only figure here which uh, collects, moves and stores data, explore it and uh, then uh, make some sort of analytics or uh, develops uh, some uh, machine learning algorithms. In a medium-sized company, we can see three uh, careers. The software engineer, which is focused on the development of the infrastructure that collects the data. Then the data engineer uh, looks at how to store the data, to transform it. And then the data scientist does the analytics part, the A-B testing, and the machine learning in total development. In a big company, uh, there's an error here, not, we are not talking about a medium company, but a, a big company, we still have the software engineer, the data engineer, but the data scientist or the analytics does only analytics or develops a small machine learning algorithms or A-B testing. The heavy part of machine learning, which could be seen as deep learning, is done by a machine learning engineer. As we've seen in this pyramid, the data is the key element of a machine learning project. So the AI team, the AI, um, AT and the business intelligence must communicate synergically to develop a strategic data acquisition process. This is very, very important. So sometimes data is already available in the company, but it, it probably needs to be analyzed to understand its true value. In other cases, it needs to be collected in the form of uh, uh, IoT sensors or uh, just to be labeled this data through data notation. So what matters the most for the success of a machine learning project is not the quantity of data, the amount of data, but its, its quality. 
so that uh, the data has to be easily available. That's why we have uh, a data engineer that uh, builds the infrastructure to have uh, data easily available. Data must be, co must be coherent with a, a small, preferably zero, but it's impossible, amount of errors and missing values. Why? Because otherwise the model will be trained on uh, uh, missing data or wrong data and its behavior will be not what expected. Third point, data must reflect correction and request from data scientists and analytics. That's why we have to uh, develop a strategic data acquisition process, because what analytics and data scientists see can be reported to the infrastructure that gets those data. Those data those information. So remember the GIGO principle, garbage in is always garbage out. So you have to first work on the garbage in, you can, the quality of the data you are using. So machine learning is a very powerful tool, but it is particularly fragile. And uh, this is reflected in the outcome of the machine learning projects. Some fast tip and tricks to start a machine learning project in a company. First of all, choose a small business problem that could be easily solved using a machine learning algorithm. Before starting, clarify what the, what's the purpose of the project using especially specific metrics. So you can quantify the uh, success of the project. Then, since uh, you are starting a machine learning project, maybe the first or the second machine learning project in your company, prefer a fast data collection or extraction. Things has to have to be done fast. For then, after the first, the fast data collection develop simple machine learning algorithms that can be used as benchmarks for the performance, the success of the, uh, the project. And then continue to the, keep uh, developing more and more complex algorithms and uh, keep uh, adjusting the data collection, the ATL project, with respect to, to, to the algorithm's problem and performances. For example, if you see that the model rep reports some sort of biases, don't uh, adjust the algorithm. Go to the data collection process and make there the changes. So please do not start a project, do not choose a project only because it allows you to use the most recent or popular technologies. Because even if you think that uh, the project will be successful and uh, you get uh, a very big and functional uh, model, algorithm, Maybe you have spent years to develop it, while you could have used simpler models to do this, basically the same thing. So start from the project, the, the, a business uh, uh, requirement, and then choose what technology to use. And second, first use the simplest technology, the simplest uh, machine learning algorithms and then move to the more complex ones. Another uh, tip avoid miscommunication or totally absence of communication between the actors of the machine learning program project. So there must be 
uh, frequent communication between the machine learning team, the management, which is the business part that uh, also uh, you, for, for which the project has, has born and the BI with, uh, that uh, is uh, as a responsibility on the data acquisition process. So there must be uh, frequent communication between these actors. Last tip would be to uh, avoid disproportionate expectations with respect to the technology Technology is currently available. That's what we have. The project execution times or the available data. For example, if you have data on your company, but you see that it's almost a trash, there's a lot of errors, a lot of missing data, don't pretend to develop a successful, big, huge machine learning project. You don't have the data, the, the amount and the quality of data that uh, will allow you, would ha have allowed you to uh, perform the task. Also, don't pretend to develop a machine learning project in a short time. And maybe with uh, the technology that uh, is available right now that could be not enough to solve the task you wanted to. So what are you waiting now to join the AI's army? You know what AI is? Uh, what are its potentials? Why we are talking about artificial intelligence right now? And now you can how you can implement artificial intelligence on your own or on your company. So don't wait, join the AI's army. See you in another course. Take care.